rolling. So welcome everybody. Um, we're at, you know, in terms of the semester, we're at week eight. So we're halfway in the semester. Um, so I know for a lot of you, it feels like it's halfway, right? You're tired and you're like, oh, right. But you've made it halfway. So you only got, you know, another half to go. Um, and then we got, you know, some holidays thrown in there at that time. So uh, it gets a little bit uh, faster at the end. Uh, but we are so excited that you're able to come uh, for MISA and then also uh, that you're able to be here for this uh, session tonight. Uh, so if it's your first time at MISA, welcome. Uh, we're so glad to have you. Uh, we have fun like this every Thursday night throughout mm -hmm. the semester. Um, so we have what's called the MISA pregame. So if you ever want to jump in early on MISA, we just chat about whatever is going on. Um, so I think Christian talked about Pokemon cards. Uh, we talked about OS Tales. Uh, we talked about the Dreams Challenge. So it's like all sorts of stuff. Whatever comes up is what we talk about. So good fun. So today we have a special session. Uh, and I appreciate this session, not only because uh, MISA allows uh, us to be able to crash sort of the MISA sessions for a little uh, program info type session, uh, but also because we have our amazing uh, academic advisors here as well. Um, so this session is going to be uh, primarily focused on our accelerated uh, MIS uh, to MSITM program. Uh, we do have a couple students that are uh, in the session here that are part of the program. Uh, so uh, that'll kind of be interesting to see if they can chime in at different spots um, and whatnot. Um, so I wanted to start just by uh, introducing sort of the gang. Mm -hmm. So most of you, if you've, if you've been coming to MISA for a little bit, you're familiar with me because I'm, I'm there. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Jonathan Sweet. I am the uh, program director for the Information Technology and Operations Management Department. Um, I'm also the instructor for the department. So I teach a variety of different classes. Um, and then I'm also, uh, I have the great privilege to be the faculty advisor for MISA. So I get to hang out with the MISA gang all the time, um, which is good fun. So, um, and then also we have our two amazing uh, advisors, one from the undergrad and one from the grad level. So at our undergraduate level, we have Gilly Rabone. So say hi, Gilly. <laughs> and then at the grad level, we have Michelle Williams. So hi, Michelle. Oh, they're giving you, do you see this? They're giving you virtual highs on the, oh, no. uh, the hugs. <laughs> pretty exciting. So, uh, so it's really great to have such a, an awesome team. Um, and that's, what's really cool about this session is we don't always have the opportunity to have basically all the main parties involved um, that deal with this program. So it's always just uh, so awesome to be able to um, do this session and I appreciate having Gilly and Michelle and that they're able to uh, take their time to uh, help us out with the session. So thanks so much. Um, so in terms of uh, questions, um, I don't know, I can probably pull up the chat on, on my end, but if you have any questions that sort of relates to um, the session kind of uh, specific, um, you can feel free and chime in at a particular time. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. Um, and then if it's something where you're like, oh, okay, I just kind of want to wait till the end, then you can wait till the end and ask your question, whatever you kind of feel most comfortable. Uh, we'll be jumping around with speakers. So I'll talk a little bit, then Gilly will talk a little bit and Michelle, uh, but feel free if you have uh, questions, uh, feel free and post them in the chat, pull up your mic or um, wait till the end. So whatever works best for you. So um, I'll start off just talking about um, sort of the program. Let me go ahead and Oh, I think I broke everything. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I touched too many things. <laughs> um, so what's our accelerated? So I'm sure some of you have heard about it. Um, if you haven't heard about it, right? So this may just be like brand new and you're like, I just saw this email you sent out earlier. That's about as much as I know about the accelerated. Um, so it's our really exciting program. Um, when we talk about acceleration, it's not that the program, the classes are like super fast or that, you know, you have to drink energy drinks to be able to survive the program. But that's nothing of that level. Um, it's just accelerated. Basically, what we try to do is it's a combined program between our undergraduate MIS and our graduate MSITM program. Um, so essentially what the program does is it allows you to earn your uh, bachelor's in business administration or your bachelor's of science um, in MIS and then your master's degree in information technology and management in as little as five years, which is uh, pretty exciting to be able to do it that quickly. Uh, some of the big pieces is no GMAT or GRE. So for those of you that have looked at all about graduate programs, 
right? Those are generally the big requirements for most programs. Uh, so the beauty of this program is if you meet the admission criteria, um, those requirements are um, basically are waived for you, which is uh, exciting. Um, you also have the opportunity to be eligible for the pathway scholarship through um, the graduate college. So um, it's right now it's kind of a shaky time with uh, graduate funding and those things. Um, so you never know how things are going to change and, and whatnot, but um, at least you have the opportunity to apply um, where this wouldn't be a scholarship that would just be open to regular students. It's just for the students that are in this program, which is really um, exciting. And then just like our regular program um, with the MSITM, we share this uh, with computer science at the graduate level. Uh, so you do get an opportunity to have a little bit more technical courses, uh, but maybe not have the full course load of a computer science major, uh, which is very helpful. So. Um, so admission requirements, do you guys want me to talk a little bit about this or do you want, want me to pass it off? What, what, do you, what are you thinking? <laughs> um, well, in terms of um, the requirements, I, if you would like, I can cover okay. uh, some information about the basics. Um, because generally how it will work is the student will, if you're interested in the program, your first point of contact will be Gilly, and then she gets you all good and ready. And once you're at that point, then you're turned over to me. So I think it would be good if Gilly would start, you know, some of the initial things that she looks at as far as in, uh, candidacy for the program. Right, exactly. So the admission requirements uh, really um, move towards the latter part of, of, of the program, of the undergraduate program. Um, some students can start applying while they're uh, juniors, uh, you know, pretty much uh, sitting at around um, 60 to 90 credits. Uh, but most students kind of more or less uh, are able to apply, I'm going to say more around between 90 to, to 100 credits or so. Um, basically, in order to be eligible, um, as listed in the information, uh, many of you might have already uh, read online, uh, you need to obviously be under the MIS program and uh, you would need to follow the information technology path as listed on, on this uh, form, as well as select a concentration. Now we have listed here MIS, uh, MISI and MISB. Of course, that's been updated to information or cybersecurity and business analytics. So, um, and, and uh, Dr. Sweet did email us to, <laughs> to verify this information. And my apologies, I, uh, I, didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't notice it as well. So. I, I have the other slides updated, but I didn't, I didn't know what the new acronym was for it, so. <laughs> right, yeah, I, it's different in two different places. For example, if you're doing a certificate, um, the, the coding is a little bit different than when we select um, cybersecurity. So we're gonna probably look into that and maybe try to align it. So it's kind of uniform across the board, including the minor. And it was actually something that um, recently came up. And um, it, it is something that we'll update, of course. But in any case, um, it's been renamed um, Cybersecurity and Business Analytics. So um, we can go over the options and discuss, you know, which <laughs> thing might be more interesting or fitting for you. Um, we also um, look at GPA. Uh, GPA is pretty big. Um, now GPA can come from a variety of, of um, uh, I don't want to say not venues, but GPA is based on both your cumulative GPA. For example, if you're a transfer student and you attended Palm Beach State and you came in with you know 3.5 GPA from Palm Beach State, and uh, you started taking your courses here at FAU and you're kind of sitting between maybe a 2.8 or a 2.9, we pretty much look at GPA all across the board. Um, you need to have a cumulative G GPA, including the, you know, your GPA from Palm Beach State as well as FAU and FAU separately, if that's correct. I'm not, um, I believe that's, that's what Michelle and uh, Dr. Sweet have explained in the past. So basically um, you, all, all the way around, you should have a 3.0. I always encourage students to try to go even past that, um, just to kind of give yourself a little cushion. <laughs> um, you know, one class sometimes can make a difference, uh, especially if you're a transfer student and you know you don't have that many courses um, under FAU. And you always want to give yourself a little breathing room, of course. And you know, we want you to excel. We want you to do well. We want to make sure that. 
um, your, you know, your grades are as high as can be, as I'm sure you, you would as well, uh, especially when it comes to scholarships and things like that. Um, you want to be eligible for as many as you can apply for. And then, of course, um, Michelle can maybe cover the statement of purpose essay that you might yeah. be looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So um, once Gilly has verified that you do make, meet the GPA requirements, you are on the path to graduate with one of those concentrations and you have enough courses where we can determine that this program would be a good fit for you, um, then you would uh, meet with me. So I'll go over with you um, the application process. Um, one portion of the application is a statement of purpose where we ask a, a student to, um, you know, uh, share with us why they feel like the program is a good fit for them, what they hope to gain from the program, um, you know, what they plan to do after graduation. If you're part of MISA, you know how important alumni is to this organization and, you know, they frequently give back of their time and expertise. So those are some of the types of things that we're looking for in the statement of purpose. Awesome. So I think we uh, covered this a little bit, but really you're interested. So where do you start, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing, like um, both Gilly and Michelle said, start with Gilly at the undergraduate level. Um, so if you're a current MIS student right now, if you're a pre sort of business student and you're interested in MIS, um, or if maybe you're still uh, undecided in your, you know, major, um, and you're trying to figure out what are some of my options. Um, I'm kind of interested in MIS or technology and those pieces. Um, Gilly's a great place to start. And then um, after you meet with Gilly, she can kind of assess and see whether you're a good candidate or not. Obviously, the earlier you catch these things, the, the better it is to make it. It's a little bit harder if you're like getting ready to graduate. Uh, but we've, we still have made things work in the past. Um, and then once you meet with Gilly, then you want to meet with Michelle and she can kind of go over the grad portion. So between the two, the undergrad and grad, um, that combo is what's going to really um, put everything together for you uh, for the program. So that's the best place to start um, if you're interested or, or if you are, let's say, a special case student where, uh, you know, maybe you're doing a double major or maybe you're getting ready to graduate or you didn't do a concentration, they can let you know all the different options because there are some rare cases where the accelerated may not be the best fit for you, uh, but we do have other options. So that's always uh, very helpful. There are always options. Yes. Um, so here are some of the required prerequisite courses. So I know uh, Gilly can jump in on, on some of these, but these are pretty much just your core MIS classes in addition to your core business course, which is ISM 3011. So all business majors will take 3011 and then specifically uh, for those of you doing MIS, um, what we call your core MIS classes would be um, focusing on that information technology con um, path mm -hmm. where you would have to take these as required. Yeah, you pretty much said it all, Dr. Sweet. There we go. <laughs> we got everything. Okay, so these are the ones you have to take. Um, yeah. Like I said, that's why you have to do the information um, technology path. Um, if you try to go more of the knowledge management path, um, this is probably not going to be the best option for you because of these required courses, but that's where you meet with Gilly um, ahead of time and you kind of talk through some of these um, and we can see, you know, what options are available. So. And I, I actually appreciate the note that is listed under, under um, where it says complete courses listed below where it says ideally by the end of your junior year as an undergraduate student as possible. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, when are you going to apply for the accelerated program? Um, and as I mentioned to um, students, uh, generally the timeline depends on a few factors and one of them being that you have at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Sweet and Michelle, is if you have at least five um, MIS courses that can be reviewed as part of the criteria to be accepted into the program. So generally, because you mix these courses with some of your other business core, early on in the junior, in your junior year, it's, it's it's a little tough to get all of them done at the same time. And, um, you know, so usually that's why I mentioned between 90 and 100 credits, uh, students are usually more ready around that time to actually apply. So perfect transition right here, Gilly. Yeah, when do I? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so as you know, we ideally we want to meet with you well ahead of time so we can kind of go over the criteria and I can, you know, each student has 
has an individual scenario. Some students are attending part-time, some students are attending full-time. Um, sometimes they're torn between um, which concentration they should follow and want to get more info and, and speak maybe with a career advisor, or speak with someone in the department, uh, possibly uh, include an internship, so on and so forth. So obviously the earlier I can meet with you, the better. We can plan ahead and really prep um, to ensure you're ready to ensure you know you have the uh, the grades you need, the courses you need, um, and um, I'm actually going to let uh, Michelle kind of take this on because of the application process, and she's uh, more uh, versed on this than I am. Okay, um, so once you are given the go ahead to submit the application, I, you know, it's really. Um, pretty straightforward because we'll tell you, hey, you know, you're ready to submit the application. Go ahead and submit the application online. So you apply online through the Graduate College website. There is a $30 application fee. Um, and you're going to submit your application for the semester after you graduate. So if you plan on, for students who might be interested in the program now who are graduating in the spring semester, your application is going to be for the summer because that is the semester that you are considered a full-fledged graduate student. Mm -hmm. You've completed your undergraduate requirements and you are now only working on your master's degree courses. Um, very important, uh, you must wait to be accepted to the program before you submit your application for a degree to Gilly. Um, I'm sorry, you do that online now, right? Am I correct? Well, no, and actually, um, students are required to meet with an advisor okay. prior um, to actually submitting the application. Um, the only issue maybe that I might have encountered is um, occasionally students that are involved in this program might do their their appointment with another advisor because of availability and things like that and trying to get it done. Um, if you can, um, I hope you, you do your final appointment with me just so that I can ensure that the credits are um, handled correctly. First, uh, properly, correctly. You will be taking a graduate course. Sometimes we have to kind of maneuver some credits around. So hopefully you would meet with me towards the tail end uh, of the program so that I can verify and make sure, you know, maybe another advisor is not as familiar with the program and might accept your application prior, as Michelle just mentioned, to uh, you being, you know, accepted. So we'll go over all of that. Um, one thing I always tell students is please contact me. Feel free. You can email me. You can make appointments with me. Um, you know, all along the, the process, uh, not to worry about the timeline, I'll walk you through that process, um, you know, from beginning to end in terms of on the bachelor end. And it is very important that you do submit your application for a degree, even though you're accepted to the master's program, you're still required to submit an application for a degree at the undergraduate level. So we've had a few students kind of forget to that a very important step. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, you're not, you're still pursuing your bachelor's degree. And once you're finished with that 120 credits, then we are going to award you the bachelor's degree and you will continue on to the master's in a seamless, smooth process. Awesome. Okay. So here, how do you apply? So um, students will visit the Graduate College website, um, fau.edu slash graduate. Um, there's an application that you submit online. Um, the application does not recognize that you're a student. So it, you're going to be filling out of this application and answering questions that you kind of feel like, hmm, you know, I'm a student here at FAU. Why am I answering those again? but you do have to answer it to the best of your recollection. This application doesn't actually merge your information until you submit it and it can match up your personal information, social security, things of that nature. Um, it's very important that students select that they are um, interested in applying for a combined program. So that's an important question that um, is pretty much one of the first questions you answer in the degree section of the application and you would select which program you're interested in. Um, again, like Dr. Sweet mentioned, there are two types of programs. There's one housed in the College of Business and there's one housed in the College of Engineering. So you just wanna make sure 
you're selecting the Bachelor of Business Administration or BS in, in Management Information Systems. That way you know for sure you're applying for the business program. Mm -hmm. And this is also important because we don't want all of the students merged together. Then we don't realize that you're applying for the accelerated program and your application may sit because we're waiting for test scores that you do not need as part of your application. Awesome. So application deadlines. Application deadlines are suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the, these are when we would like students to submit their application to um, be considered. But again, you're going to rely more so on Gilly and I as far as, you know, individual cases and when applications should be submitted. But it is important to note that every single semester we do accept students into this program so it does not matter which semester you're graduating you do have an opportunity to participate and again um, as i briefly mentioned before there is a 30 dollars application fee you are not required to submit any undergraduate transcripts because you're a student here and the system will recognize that once you submit the application so for the application you just need to complete it in its entirety um, upload your personal statement and pay the $30 application fee. And that will get you ready to be reviewed. So once you are admitted to the program, um, you will of course complete the concentration courses, whether you're doing cybersecurity or business analytics. That would be something that Gilly has probably already set up with you and you already have a plan to do, but you just wanna make sure that you do follow through with that plan so that you are still eligible um, for the program come um, graduation time. During your final semester uh, as an undergraduate student, students are allowed to take a graduate level course, ISM 6405. So depending on <laughs> your particular circumstances, this may count towards your 120 credits if you have free electives left at the end of your program. And it will also count towards your graduate degree because you will only be required to complete 30 credits rather than the 33 minimum that students who come in the traditional path are required to complete. So just one very important caveat to that that I um, need to mention to students is there is a financial aid piece to this, okay? Not all students have space in their undergraduate uh, credits to have this count towards the 120 credits. So if, that, if you fall into that particular situation, financial aid may not cover the cost of that particular uh, class. So I always, you know, want students to make sure if you are a recipient of financial aid that you check with your financial aid advisor if you are accepted to the program to make sure that course will be covered if it's towards the 120 credits. Or sometimes there are workarounds. If you are already a full-time student and this course is an extra course, you may have leftover funds that will qualify for this class. So we're not the experts by any means. So we want you to please sit down with your financial aid advisor. We don't want you to you know, be excited and ready for the program and then find out that this course um, is not covered and you may have to come up with extra money in order to cover the costs. And last thing that is most important, you have to maintain a 3.0 graduate GPA to be in good academic standing. Usually this is not an issue for students and this is why our admissions process is you know, very thorough and um, reviewed so strongly because we want to make sure that students um, you know, are able to succeed. 3.0 is the minimum to be in good academic standing at the graduate level. So that's kind of the baseline and you want to go up from there. Awesome. Did I miss anything? That's it. Okay. Here's a question okay. though, just because I've run into this with some of our undergrad students. So, um, and sometimes with course offerings, depending when they're starting and if they need that graduate course summer might not be offered. So we can uh, sometimes look at an alternate. Sometimes um, ISM 6405 might be full. Mm -hmm. 
what what is the best recommendation in terms of an alternate option or is it something that think, you would review each semester yeah i think it changes um each semester depending on you know uh new classes that are being offered mm -hmm. where there's a need um for students you know some new topic that we feel will be valuable and and um, you know that our students should take advantage of so it, it varies and we will always find another substitution for the student you know you can just reach out to me and i always discuss it with dr sweet dr denev and kind of find an alternative so. and, and that's the great thing about this program as well is there's a lot of communication between all of us so it's not just where you know the advisors are kind of hanging out there in limbo kind of not knowing what to do and then waiting you know days or weeks to hear from the department uh, Dr. Denev is always very quick on responses. She's very accommodating. Um, so it's always easy when Gilly or Michelle come with me and say, you know, we, are, we got this student, it's this special circumstance, what do we do? And if I can't think of something off the top of my head, or maybe I don't know that we have an option, I can always reach out to Dr. Denev and she's always willing to uh, make it work. So um, we can't always say that for every other program. So we're very thankful um for the team to be able to have this and it's all to benefit you guys as the students so yeah this is truly an Great. amazing program and um students will vouch for that that are in it so, so. and have told me as well <laughs> a question uh i have a question um dr sweet in terms of um in terms of selecting a concentration on the graduate end and this is this has been a question that has been posed by students so for example, if a student is doing business analytics on the undergraduate side, what would really is starting to form an interest in, in cybersecurity. Um, can they select that uh, on the graduate end? So a perfect, perfect segue. Um, so in oh. terms of the, of the, of the flow, um, I think you'll see f every student is different. And like I said before, we have the, the beauty of the program is the options we have. Um, so, you know, some students have done security uh, at the undergraduate level for the concentration. And then since we don't have a security concentration at the grad level, um, they decide to either do our information technology management, which is sort of our traditional concentration for the masters, or they'll, they'll kind of do the best of both worlds. They'll do security undergrad, and then they'll do analytics grad. And then that way, depending on what field or what area they go in, they have them both covered. Um, I, I've seen tons of them do different mixes of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really up to the student on whatever they think um, is interesting to them. Um, or like I said, if they want to try them both and then maybe they don't know, they think they want to go security and then they may take an analytics class and say, you know, especially when you take the bridge class, you may be like, hey, I like this advanced business analytics. I maybe want to do this for the grad level. But the great thing is you still will have really great job opportunities regardless of which track you go. It's all about um, the interest. So um, like we talked about, you have the undergraduate concentration you can do in security. You have the undergraduate concentration in analytics. Now you have to choose one of the two. Unfortunately, uh, you have to make a choice. Um, and then for our graduate core that kind of work across both of them. So you'll take that 6405 if that works for you uh, with your schedule as you're working with Gilly and, and Michelle. Um, the other ones that we have sort of our core that regardless of which track you go at the graduate level, um, you'll be taking ISM 6026 and then our GEB 6215. And surprisingly, when I talked to a lot of alumni, uh, one of the classes that they said was the most valuable, and even last week when we had Shannon Stewart, who was also a um, accelerated alum, he said uh, GEB 6215 was one of the most valuable classes for him in his professional life. Uh, wow. Because he said a lot of people don't uh, don't feel comfortable speaking in front of others. And especially if you're going to be managing individuals, uh, your communication skills are important. So uh, that was kind of a really cool thing from, from Shannon, but you really have such uh, great options as well. So uh, going in. I mean, Dr. Sweet, if I could piggyback off of that question, um, can you just speak a little bit to students who may cons be concerned that I did the business analytics as, as an undergrad and I, you know, I applied to do the business analytics, but I see a lot of similar um, course names. Yep. So great, great question. So thankfully through the work of our amazing advisors and the, the work of our students bringing up these, 
Um, we've beefed up these analytics classes a lot more than let's say they were in the early days when we were still trying to get interest from students. Uh, so predominantly in the past, we had a lot of these classes cross listed with the undergraduate courses. So in the early days, we had some students that were taking, let's say one of the undergraduate analytics classes, and then they would take the grad class and we're like, wait, this is the same thing. So thankfully, because of all of you and your interest in the analytics, a predominant amount of all of our graduate level classes are all full graduate level classes um, that are not cross listed for the analytics. So it gives you an opportunity um, to be able to build upon your analytics experience um, and go further. But then we also have the ease for some of the students who didn't take the analytics undergraduate. So if they wanna you know, peer into the analytics route for the graduate, um, it's still you know, open and accessible for you to do well and you don't have to have this uh, extreme background in analytics to be successful. So really good. Dr. Sweet, for yes. students who ask, who are maybe concerned a little bit about the programming aspect of some of these courses, would, would you recommend they uh, take the analytics route or, or cyber, I mean, I would imagine cybersecurity would have more of that programming aspect to it. Or so it's not necessarily it, the case. Yeah, it, it really all depends. Um, you know, at the programming level, because you'll be taking that one core class in Java, um, that's really what we call the core sort of programming that you'd have. And then within your analytics concentration, you will have some sort of what we call programming esque type classes. So you'll have in database, you'll go through structured queries and being able to write some of those. Um, you'll take, you know, classes with R and Python that have different types of programming languages, but they're not necessarily what we would call like a traditional programming course. Um, it would really all depend, um, you know, on the student and their, their interests. So um, we've had students that were really interested in, in programming and they did analytics, but we've had some that have been really interested in programming and done security. So um, it's not really something where it's going to be a heavy sort of computer science type program because that's not really what our program is. It's more for business and technology. So um, we try to have that balance, but I don't think if it's something where you're, you, we have some students that are like, uh, you know, I don't like programming. I don't like any of those. Right. <laughs> um, we still have some of those options. It's just, it's really, it's based on the student's interest. So you would want to go more of the security route if you're interested in a security type position. Um, whereas if you're interested more in an analyst role, um, then the business analytics would be really your, your best bet to go. Um, and oftentimes those, those conversations are great ones to have with me on a one-on-one -on -one session because I can pull up our amazing list of alumni and I can show you what concentrations they did and what jobs they were placed in. Um, so like for Shannon, for example, he did security undergrad at the grad level, he did the information technology management concentration and he's an IT manager. So he doesn't really do any programming, uh, but he had the knowledge so that when his developers come and ask him questions about things, he has the basic knowledge of, since he did programming, but he has the management um, skills, which is really important um, you know, for you to have, especially when you're at some of those more senior IT positions. Thank you. So here's the different concentrations. We have those two. So the ITM is what we call our traditional um, concentration. So this is more of a holistic um, IT position. So it's not going to be anything specific with analytics. As you can see, um, we have classes in security, um, IT sourcing, project management, um, uh, enterprise IT, web-based business development. It's a pretty good mix. Um, and then if you want to keep the analytics route, or if you want to explore the analytics route, if you did security undergrad, um, that's going to have a pre predominantly um, analytics focused. Um, so there will be a lot more analysis that goes on for that, but I don't want you to think it's a lot of math. Um, it's more of using these different technology tools uh, to provide different solutions. So that's really kind of the focus. Um, and then the great thing as of recent that we've been able to get is uh, you do take three uh, College of Engineering electives for the program. Um, and in the past, it was kind of a mix of classes all over the place. Um, and sometimes it was a little bit more challenging for certain students, depending on which class you chose. So thankfully, through uh, the work of the students and the advisors and talking with Dr. Denev, we actually have a list of approved classes that are recommended for our business students for those computer science classes. Um, so it's really helpful for you 
as a student because now you're taking a class where the professor knows that you're coming from the College of Business and they can be a little bit more supportive in terms of um, their help for the class. So that was a big, a big benefit and a big uh, uh, <laughs> incentive for this program. Whereas um, in the past, it was a little bit more challenging for students to find one that was a good fit. Now we have a nice uh, smooth uh, list of classes that we get every semester. So uh, very beneficial for, for you guys. So I think that has made a, a great change in the program um, where students were pretty much dreading those um, courses. But when Dr. Sweet talked about the communication between everyone in this program, that was a direct result of, you know, that your staff and faculty members, you know, really care about you and want you to succeed and will, you know, make changes where they're needed, so. Great. So one of the other great opportunities in terms of courses is our internship for credit class. Uh, so this class is offered every semester um, for both the undergrad and graduate level. So at the undergraduate level, it's a little bit more challenging to incorporate it into your program because you're doing the concentration. Uh, but that would be where you talk with Gilly and uh, you never know, there's always um, free electives sometimes or certain students have that opening and others we can work around. Um, so definitely talk with Gilly at that point. At the graduate level, it's a little bit uh, easier uh, because we actually have this built into the curriculum where you can substitute uh, specific classes for the internship for credit, but it's really great opportunity. Um, you get basically the opportunity to get some internship experience and then also get course credit at the same time. So uh, for a lot of you um, that are looking for, for jobs and maybe don't have experience, um, this is a great way for you to do that. And then for those of you that are working somewhere and you want to pivot into a new role um, or try something out, an internship's a great way for you to kind of get your feet wet in that new area, see if you like it or you don't like it. Uh, because oftentimes that, that knowledge of knowing whether you like something or whether you don't like something is critical to your whole career path moving forward. So um, great opportunity. And this is especially great one in the summer because in the summer we don't have a lot of classes that we offer because a lot of the faculty focus on research in the summer. Um, so their teaching loads are, sh are smaller. So we don't have as many classes. So this is always a great one if you can fit it in, in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also usually have a lot more internship opportunities for the summer. So really great. So then uh, last in terms of just um, topics. So one of the things we mentioned about before that's unique for this program is um, the eligibility for the pathway scholarship. Um, so this is only open to accelerated students. Um, so this is a great opportunity. It's uh, you're eligible for $2,000. Essentially it's broken up into two increments. So you have a thousand year first um, sort of part of the program. And then once you kind of get into the graduate portion, if you can complete it within two years or less, um, then you get that sort of that second uh, increment. Um, and it, it's helpful. Every little bit counts. Um, and it's nice to know that uh, this is only for a select pool of students. Um, so one of the other great perks versus just going our traditional route into the master's program. So then uh, success stories. So this is some of the recent ones. I keep track of some of these. These are just recent, recent. Um, uh, Angelica is probably one of the most recent. So these are, are finished completed. As we talked about before um, in the session right now, we actually have some students that are in the program. They just haven't finished the graduate component yet. Um, so we have a lot of students even right now that are going through the program. But these are just some of the recent ones. Um, from last fall. So Angelica, she did an internship at Office Depot through the program, then she was able to get there full time. Um, Al, you've seen him jump in on some of the sessions. Mm -hmm. um, Al did internship at Office Depot as well. Uh, but he through the internship said it wasn't something that he was really feeling like it was a good fit for him. And then he was able to get something here at FAU as an IT coordinator. Um, and then the list goes on. We you saw Shannon last week, um, Jessica Deploy was one of our early ones. She was actually just promoted last year to a chief information officer um, at our source healthcare local. Uh, so to be uh, graduate in fall 16 and then fall 19, become a chief executive as a female in the IT field is remarkable. Um, so, and you can see the mix of positions. So we have some like Jonathan Rauscher that really liked um, uh, business analytics and, and data analysis. And so he's a data scientist now um, 
you can see some that like the sales. So Bruno did renewal sales for technology. So the, the mix of opportunities you have um, is really just up to whatever your interest is. And this is just a small snapshot. If I showed you, I have a spreadsheet of all the alums, right? This is just a small, small, small sample, um, not including the students that have already finished the undergraduate um, component. So like Emily, for example, she works here in OIT. You've heard from TJ before. He works at Modernizing Medicine. Um, you got Jonathan Rivas on here. He works for a local IT company. Um, so it's a pretty big mix of, of um, placement for students and placement before you even graduate, which is always really um, exciting, especially uh, for those of you that get nervous and worried right before you're going to graduate. It'd be really nice to have a job already lined up and uh, just be able to uh, graduate without those additional worries. So. All right, and then uh, obviously you know about uh, MISA because you're here, but if you don't, if this was your first time, uh, MISA is a great opportunity. So I can't believe this picture was actually from the spring, spring 2020. So would we have ever known at this time that okay. life would be so different? Wow. Uh, but we're trying to make it work and, and, and have fun on these online sessions. Uh, but MISA is a great opportunity for those internships, um, a great opportunity to connect with your fellow MIS students. Uh, because the key that you always want to make sure when you're going through um, this program is that you never want to do these programs alone, right? You want to be able to meet friends. You want to be able to network, get uh, fellow colleagues that you can continue. And then, you know, you never know how somebody's working somewhere and they say, hey, we need somebody. And you just happen to be talking to that person and you're able to get the position there. So uh, really great um, for you to be able to do that. And it's a great opportunity to be involved. Um, so with that, uh, I guess we can go ahead and, and open it up to um, some questions. Uh, but at any point, if you are saying, oh, well, you know what? I don't want to ask a question right now. Um, it's, it's something specific. Or maybe you say, I just want to shoot an email. Um, our emails are there, so you can reach out to us anytime. Um, and we coordinate together. So if there's ever something that we can't figure something out, uh, we'll, we'll chat together and figure out options and, and make it work for you. So, so. Now questions. So if anybody has any questions, you can type in the chat or you can um, pop open your mic. Whatever works best for you. I guess I can stop sharing my screen now. That <laughs> there we go. Uh, stop share. Okay. So I can probably go ahead and stop the recording too. Then I don't think about it. <laughs> All right. 